Hide yourselves, quickly! The Syrians are coming! The family were pleased their neighbors had called out a warning. Now, they could all hide in the inner room of their house. But why were the Syrians sending another of their raiding parties into the northern part of Israel? Had they not stolen enough already? Then, the invaders broke into the house. They grabbed the girl in the family. You come with us! They could make money by taking her back to Syria and selling her as a servant. Imagine how upset the family felt as they saw their daughter being taken away. But there was nothing they could do to stop it. What was the name of this girl? We do not know because the Bible does not tell us. But today, we will call her Abigail. Abigail's heart must have been filled with fear as she began the long journey to a strange land, from Israel to Syria. But Abigail knew the Lord. She had seen and heard Elijah, and perhaps it was because of him that she had decided to love and follow the Lord. When Abigail arrived in Syria, at least there was one thing to be thankful about. She became a servant of a very important man, the commander of the Syrian army. So I suppose he lived in a nice house. Although Abigail did not realize it at that time, God was the one who arranged for her to be there. When we follow God, we can trust Him to work out the best things for us. But as Abigail started her work as a servant, I am sure there were many confused thoughts in her mind. Why has God let this happen to me and not to some other person? It is unfair. All the others back home can play with their friends and family, but I have to be a servant. Does God still care about me? Perhaps, as she told God about all these feelings inside her, perhaps God whispered a thought in her mind. Maybe God said, It will be all right, my daughter. I am with you. I have chosen you to do a special work for me. So, Abigail decided she would be the best servant girl she could be. So she did not just work hard when people were watching her. She even worked well when she was left on her own. After all, she knew God was watching everything she did. And I think God had a smile on His face when He saw how well she was working. Perhaps there were times when her master asked her to clean the room. I think... Abigail did not just clean the middle of the room and the parts that everyone could see. I think she lifted all the vases and cleaned the dust from around them. I think she moved the chairs and swept the floor behind them. If she had to fold a pile of washing, she would do it carefully and not rushing through it as quickly as she could. If there was some money lying on the table, she did not try to steal it. And I am sure her master noticed all these small things and was pleased to have Abigail as her servant. This girl was always seemed to be so obedient and respectful towards her. Of course, she did not understand Abigail's secret. What do you think her secret was? Her secret was she loved God and wanted to show her love by obeying Him. That meant being obedient to her parents and now to the other adults God had put in charge of her. But not everything was easy for Abigail. The Syrians worshipped an idol called Rimon, who they thought was a god. They would offer daily gifts and sacrifices to the idol and they even prayed to it. Of course, 
The idol was only made out of wood or stone, so it could not hear and answer any of their prayers. Maybe Abigail thought, Why do the people not know the real God like we do in Israel? The Lord our God warned us never to make and worship idols or bow down to them. Elisha the prophet had told us that many times. Well, it must have been very hard for her to be the only one in the house to know and follow the true God. She could not meet with other believers to pray and sing together or even to hear God's words taught to her from the Bible. Many people get discouraged and give up following God if they are the only believers in their place. Some even start worshipping the idols again, just because everyone around them is doing it. But not Abigail. Abigail kept on praying and living for God even though she was all on her own. What would happen if you were the only Christian believer in your home and you had no chance to meet with other Christians or to learn more about God? Would you soon give up following God or would you be like Abigail? There was another thing that Abigail must have found hard. Even though her master, Naaman, was such an important man, he had a very big problem. Naaman was a leper. Leprosy was a very bad skin disease that had no cure. It usually got worse until the person could not use their hands and feet. It was also a disease that could be passed on to other people. So I suppose Naaman had to be careful who he came close to. Naaman probably had to wear bandages, maybe even to protect his own wife. As Abigail saw how Naaman suffered from this disease, she felt very sorry for him. She remembered all the miracles Elisha had done, even miracles of healing. Abigail just wished God could do something for Naaman. But Naaman did not even know about the true and living God that was worshipped in Israel. I am sure she thought, I am just a servant girl. There is no way I could talk to my master about God. Well, perhaps God put the thought in Abigail's mind. And maybe God said, Why not, Abigail? That must have begun a real struggle inside Abigail. Abigail loved God and wanted to obey Him. She was not ashamed to tell others about His healing power. But could she, a servant girl, talk to her master about this? Never. However, I am sure she prayed, God, if there is a way, and if He would listen, please, Lord, help me to say something. Perhaps the Lord showed her how to go about it. Abigail, talk to Naaman's wife first. So one day, Abigail asked God for courage. Then, she said to her master, If only my master could see the prophet who lives in Israel, he would cure him of his leprosy. Abigail knew that Elisha had the power of God's Holy Spirit in him. But why should this rich lady believe what her servant said? She was only a girl. She came from a different country, spoke a different language, had a different religion. Why believe her? I think the wife of Naaman believed Abigail because she knew how her servant girl did her job. She knew that she was honest and could be trusted. So, she told her husband. He was commander of the army. He was not used to listening to what servants had to say. But he also took notice of what Abigail said. 
What do you think that was? Abigail was setting such a good example in his household that he, too, knew he could believe the trust what she said. How about you? How much do you want to share the good news of God the Father and His Son, Jesus? If you do, you too must first set a good example of what it means to live for God. Otherwise, people will not take any notice of what you say. If you tell people that God can change them, but you are still arguing and fighting and telling lies, they will not believe you because you have not changed. Well, Naaman went to see the king of Syria and told him what this servant girl from Israel had said. The king, of course, greatly respected Naaman because he had done so well in battles. He had fought against other countries. So, the king was very happy for Naaman to go to Israel. In fact, the king said, don't worry, Naaman. I will send a letter to the king of Israel about it. So Naaman set off on the journey to Israel. He took with him a lot of money and other gifts. When he arrived at the palace of the king of Israel, Naaman gave him the letter from the king of Syria. The king read, with this letter, I am sending Naaman to you so that you may cure him of leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he was so upset that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See, he's just trying to pick a quarrel with me. Unfortunately, the Israelite king was not living for God, so he did not know what to do. When Elisha heard what had happened, he sent the king this message. Why have you tore your clothes? Send the man to me, and then he will know there is a prophet of God in Israel. How relieved the king must have felt, but how sad that he did not even remember the power of God at work in Elisha's life, like the young girl from his own country had. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. He must have felt very excited. What is going to happen? But Elisha did not even come out of his house. Maybe he knew that God wanted to teach Naaman to be obedient to him and to get rid of his pride. So Elisha sent Gehazi, his servant, out to Naaman with this message. Go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River, and you will be made clean from your leprosy. Naaman was furious. Wash myself seven times? He turned and left Elisha's house. He complained to his servants. I thought that he could surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God. I was expecting him to wave his hand over me and cure me of my leprosy. Surely the rivers in Syria are better than this river in Israel. Could I not have washed in them and be cleansed? His servants saw how angry their master was. They knew that everyone in Syria would treat him with great respect. Yet Elisha had not even come out to meet him. They knew Naaman's pride had been hurt. So they said, Naaman, if the prophet had told you to some great and difficult thing, could you not have done it? How much easier is it when he just tells you to wash in the river and be healed? God wanted Naaman to simply obey and do what he was told, even if it did seem strange and unusual, and even if other people did think he was making a fool of himself. Sometimes, God asks us to do things that might seem strange to us, 
or things that might seem foolish to other people. Things like bowing our head and giving thanks to God before we eat our lunchtime meal. Things like walking away if other children are telling rude stories or jokes. Things like telling someone that God can help them with their problem. Just like Abigail did to Naaman's wife. So, finally, Naaman decided that if he was going to be healed, he would have to obey God. So he went down and dipped himself in the river Jordan. What happened next? Nothing. His skin was still deceased. Because maybe God was not going to work after all. Maybe he really was making a fool of himself. But why had nothing happened? Because God had told him to wash himself seven times, not only once, but seven times. And Naaman had to learn to obey everything God had shown him. Have you learned that lesson yet? How about you? How often do you obey the things God shows you to do as you listen to our stories each week? So, Naaman dipped himself in the river again and again for seven times. Of course, when he had finally done it seven times, what happened? Yes, he was healed just as God had promised through Elisha. Naaman and all his servants hurried back to Elisha's house. Naaman told him, Now, I know that there is no God in all the world except the God of Israel. Naaman was so thankful, he wanted Elisha to take a gift of money and clothes. But Elisha refused. Elisha did not serve God and help people so that he could receive money in return. Sadly, there are Christian leaders today who will only pray a special prayer for someone if they give them money. God says, we are to freely give away the things we have received from God. Even though Naaman really wanted to give a gift to him, Elisha refused to take it. He knew it was not his power that had healed Naaman. It was God's power. Never become proud of yourself if you do something to help another person. Remember, that it is God who has helped you to do it. Naaman's heart was completely changed that day. Now, he knew God was real. He had seen God in the character of Abigail. Now, he had seen God's power in his own life. No longer would he worship the idol Rimon again. Imagine the joy when Naaman arrived home and told everything that had happened, how happy he was to be healed from leprosy, how happy his wife must have been, and how happy Abigail was. Abigail was so thankful to God that she obeyed him and told her master about Elisha. She was pleased that she had made the effort to set an example of how a believer in God should work and live. If it had not been for that, her master would have not trusted her and listened to her. Now, I am sure that she was able to say to God, God, I did not understand why you allowed me to be taken away from my home. But now, I can see that you had a special job for me to do in this house. Thank you, God, that you gave me courage to talk about your power. Because Abigail and Naaman both obeyed God, great blessing came upon them. If you live the way God shows you, He will also bring great blessings on you and those around you. If you need courage to obey God, ask Him right now. Ask Him right now to help you.
Let's close in prayer. Yes, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the lesson that we had. And thank you, Father, for the story that we watched. Lord, help us to share about you. Give us the courage to share your word to other people. And Lord, help us to obey the people around us. And also, help us to obey our parents, our ates, our kuyas, and the people around us. And Lord, help us also that whatever we do, we will do it well, O oh God. And we entrust you everything. This all we ask, Lord, in your name. Amen. Make me a servant Make me a servant